The latest Lakers news and rumors here by Chat Sports. LeBron James was asked recently, basically, do you feel good about this roster? Does a trade need to happen? And predictably said, oh, I'm confident with what he had. Do you believe him, though, Chase? I do believe him because he knows what the Lakers are when they are at full capacity. And True. without Anthony Davis, we saw this team get exposed. Prior to the All-Star break, they went 3-7. and seven. But when LeBron James says he's confident, and when Frank Vogel says he has no worries and he's very confident about this team as they make a run at possibly a second straight NBA championship, I put stock in that. The Lakers are a really good team when they're at full strength, yep. but they are without one of the best players in the NBA. Now, when it comes to Anthony Davis, I don't think he's a true number one. Could you make the argument he's the best number two in the yes. league and the perfect complement to LeBron James because we saw the magic that they can make happen last year in their first season together? Yes. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And I do wonder, though, because GM LeBron tends to come out, uh, you know, when you get closer to the NBA trade deadline. I think in the back of his mind, he's saying, look, I think we can make a run with what you have. But I'd like to also add a piece as well. Both yeah. can be true. Here's what LeBron had to say. He said, look, I love what we have. Obviously, we've had some injuries with the big one being Anthony Davis. That's the biggest injury. But from there on, we've had some other things as well. But I believe when we're whole and when we're full, we can compete with anyone in the world. And he's exactly right because we saw it last year. This, this is basically the same team outside of a couple of minor pieces from last year that won a championship pretty easily, I might add. But... You see what Brooklyn has done, adding pieces, obviously trading for Harden. You add Blake Griffin. Uh, you know, there's other formidable teams. Utah has emerged this year. I think that they do have enough. Obviously, a healthy Anthony Davis would go a long way. This is a Lakers team that won a championship last year. I'd actually make the argument that Los Angeles is better this year okay. because of the additions of Dennis Schroeder, because of the additions of Montrez Harrell. Yes. But... The Los Angeles Lakers will not compete for a championship unless Anthony Davis returns healthy. This team, as I mentioned, three and seven, entering the All-Star break without the services of AD, they are a completely different team, both offensively and defensively, without AD. And that's an injury that I'm actually kind of worried about. Yes, they called it an Achilles calf injury, but anytime those things are connected, they could linger for a while. And as we saw, AD tried to come back from, you know, a slight pinch in that area, and then he got hurt again. Yeah. So the Lakers have to be cautious about AD moving forward because if he goes down, that will cost them another title run. But when this guy is right, he's unbelievable. Averaging nearly 23 points per game, he's basically almost going to give you a double-double night in, night out, knocking down shots from the elbow, down low, great athlete, can hit threes as well. Uh, so the Lakers definitely need AD if they're going to go after a second straight Larry OB. Yeah, and I'll be very fascinated to see how aggressive the Lakers are at the trade deadline because they don't have a ton of assets. They don't have a ton of cap flexibility. We'll see if they're willing to move like a Contavious Caldwell Pope potentially to make a trade like that happen. I do think if they do swing for a big man, that could tell us something about how they feel about AD moving forward, at least for this season. He's supposed to be back sometime soon, but they've said this time they're going to take their time when it comes to Anthony Davis, because like you said, last time it lingered on and he got a, a little bit worse, and that's why he's been out for the past month or so. So can the Lakers repeat without making a trade? Let's assume AD comes back healthy and this group is ready to go. Can they win it all with what they have? Real quick. Oh, I made my point known. I think this Lakers team this year – better than last year's team. I think they're more talented. They have a little bit more depth, especially if they add a piece or two. So type one for yes, type two for no. If you think the Lakers can win it all with making a trade, go ahead and get your votes in. Today's show, we've got some St. Paddy's Day NBA theme gear for you guys. The day is almost here. March 17th is St. Patrick's Day. And if you want to represent your team while wearing some green gear, go to this link on screen. It's chatsports.com slash NBA green. All 30 NBA teams, shirts, socks, hats, long sleeves, short sleeves, some hoodies, all types of gear is available at chatsports.com slash NBA green. Don't get pinched on St. Patrick's Day. Go ahead and represent your favorite team. And I'll throw this out there, too. If you're a Celtics fan, you can wear this stuff all year long. It just fits in right, right with the, uh, the Celtics culture there. So we'll put that link in the comments. We'll put it in the description. St. Paddy's Day is almost here. 
chatsports.com slash NBA green. Go ahead and represent your favorite team before the holiday on March 17th. Let's go ahead and start with LaMarcus Aldridge here, Chase. Looks like he's on the move as the veteran and the San Antonio Spurs have agreed to part ways. They're going to look to explore a trade for the veteran big man. They are, and maybe the San Antonio Spurs can trade LaMarcus Aldridge. It might get to the point where they don't have any leverage, and they might have to possibly let him go, and then LaMarcus Aldridge hits the buyout market. I kind of put Aldridge in the same category as Blake Griffin, who we covered at length last week when him and the Pistons agreed to a buyout. It's... They're not the same players that they once were, yeah. and they have a lot of name power, but Blake Griffin and LaMarcus Aldridge, if they hop on board to title contending teams, they're going to add front court depth, they're going to add playoff experience, and I think they both could be reinvigorated a little bit and give those playoff teams a little bit of a push. But LaMarcus Aldridge, an interesting name because he's a big who can stretch the floor. Now, he's not going to average 20 and 10 like he was in his prime, but LaMarcus Aldridge certainly a an intriguing possible trade candidate and if he goes on the buyout market there are going to be a lot of suitors I, I will say I do think there's a chance he gets traded compared to Blake as a final year of his deal yep. that was not the case with Blake Griffin and not the injury concerns now certainly LaMarcus Aldridge's game has dipped he's not quite the volume score, but the efficiency is still pretty solid there. 46% from the field. Like you said, he's worked on his three-point game later on in his career. I think there's a chance they can find a trade for him. Contract this year is $24 million. They're going to have to find the right team. Maybe a three-team trade is more likely, but I do think it could happen. But to your point, a buyout ultimately could be the result if they don't find a trade between now and March 25th. The buyout market has become more and more valuable over the last several seasons. And for a lot of these teams that make deep playoff pushes, make runs to the NBA Finals, there are some players on those rosters over the last couple of years who have been key contributors yep. who were acquired via the buyout market. So as I alluded to earlier, I don't think LaMarcus Aldridge has a ton of value right now as a trade asset. Yes, he has an expiring contract, but he's currently expensive. So, yeah, I think Aldridge is a guy who could possibly hit the buyout market because I just don't think that the Spurs had a lot, have a lot of leverage right now. You remember when the Mavs added uh, Amari Stoudemire late in his career, yeah. and people were like, man, what does he have left in the tank? And he averaged like 12-8 and eight with Dallas. Yeah. I think he could be that low minutes, high volume type of guy off a bench on a contending team. So we'll see what happens. We want to know from you guys, what is the more likely scenario for LaMarcus Aldridge? Type T for trade, type B for a buyout. I want to know from you guys what you guys think the more likely scenario is. I'll just mention some teams that I think could make sense. Lakers, number one. Yep. I, I think that's they're going to scour the buyout market. Look at what Brooklyn's done. They already added Blake Griffin. If you're a team like L.A., yeah, you're the defending champs, but your front court's a little thin. Uh, you know, Anthony Davis has been banged up, and obviously Mark Gasol has not played to the level that he used to play, obviously. Maybe LaMarcus Aldridge could be a fit there. And then, obviously, Boston could use a big. A team like Golden State, I think, would be interested if he gets bought out. But I think especially L.A. makes a lot of sense here. L.A. certainly makes a lot of sense. And I, I do want to make a point here in saying that LaMarcus Aldridge defensively, <laughs> he doesn't really no. have a lot of defensive no. potential or ability anymore. He's somewhat slow on his feet. But for a guy who can hit elbow jumpers and extend the floor uh, and space it a little bit from beyond the arc, he can do that and be a valuable player offensively. May, may a little defense off is staggering between him and Mark Gasol. Gasol's yeah. still a decent defender. That could be an option if the Lakers do become a viable team for LaMarcus Aldridge. So predict it for us. Which team will Aldridge go to, whether it's a trade or via buyout? Go ahead and comment down below and let us know on this one. Let's talk P.J. Tucker now. Similar boat as LaMarcus Aldridge. The Rockets and uh, P.J. Tucker have come to an agreement that uh, he's not going to play in Houston anymore. He approached them and basically said, look, I'm out. <laughs> We've lost 14 games in a row or whatever it is. It makes sense for me to move on. And ultimately, it makes sense for the Rockets to move on and go ahead and let go of the 35-year-old veteran at this point. He was a healthy scratch on Thursday, and I actually feel bad for Steven Silas yes. because this guy has worked so hard his entire career to finally land a head coaching gig, and he thinks that when he 
is named head coach of the Houston Rockets, that he's going to take over a team with some star power. Russell Westbrook, even though, even though I'm not a huge fan of his at this point in his career, still productive player. James Harden, they brought in DeMarcus Cousins. Of course, Eric Gordon, P.J. Tucker. And you're thinking, okay, this could be a pretty solid playoff team. Yep. And then what happens? James Harden says, I want out. Russell Westbrook get, gets traded. The Rockets fall apart. They bring in John Wall. He's just been okay. Now P.J. Tucker wants out. It's kind of unfortunate for Steven Silas that he finally got a gig like this, and it just hasn't worked out. And I think the frustration was pretty felt in this quote. We'll just read it for you guys real quick from Silas. We're going to try and figure something out that works for him and works for us as far as him not being on the team anymore. I was under the assumption that he was going to play tonight, and he didn't play. That was disappointing. He decided that he was just not really with it, and we decided that he was just, or that we he decided that he was not really with it, and we decided that that's a good idea. Let's move on. So Silas there basically saying like, okay, you want out? We'll just dump you because I think Silas is trying to instill his culture in Houston of saying. Okay, like, you don't want to be here? We'll get you out. We got to rebuild. And that's really my main point here, Chase, is that it is time for the Houston Rockets to just bite the bullet and rebuild. It is time to go in a new direction. You lost Harden. Okay, it's time to, it's time to go. Oh, you offer Oladipo an extension for some reason. He says no. All the signs are pointing to commit to the future. Yeah. Right? This era is over. I know, you know, Daryl Morey, while he was there, was super aggressive and obviously their own owner, Tillman Fertitta, he wants to win a championship, but this is the reality of professional sports. The windows open and close, and they, uh, and they close very quickly like they have here on the Houston Rockets. Now, I want to ask you this. Tucker moving forward. Okay, he'll get traded. He'll get bought out. We'll see what happens. What are some teams that you think can make sense? I think the Lakers are also a fit for Tucker because they've been linked to P.J. Tucker. The Lakers, when it comes to the trade deadline and these two weeks leading up to it, when it comes to the buyout market, the Lakers are going to be in play for a lot of veteran players. And as we've talked about on this show before, anytime a seasoned vet hits the open market, LeBron James, the general manager, is going to inquire season. about his services. <laughs> but let's pull up this list of potential P.J. Tucker destinations. The Boston Celtics are at the top of the list. Brooklyn Nets are also there as well, but them signing Blake Griffin might take them out of the sweepstakes for P.J. Tucker. And then there are three more teams that we want to get to, teams like the Golden State Warriors, who are at the bottom of the Western they Conference depth, playoff standings. Toughness. They need depth, they need toughness, and they need some front court physicality, so you have to put the Warriors into the equation. And as we mentioned, the Los Angeles Lakers. And then, of course, a team like the Milwaukee Bucks could also be in play for P.J. Tucker as well. So... Uh, L.A. has reached out for P.J. Tucker, and they are definitely interested in him, according to reports. Bucks, by the way. And if you want to play small ball offense, defense in the playoffs, and you want to put P.J. Tucker in at the five, as we know last year when the Houston Rockets went with that infamous small ball lineup, yep. it was P.J. Tucker at the center spot. So yep. he has experience playing the four and the five. He can hit some threes as well. And L.A. seems to be a prime team that P.J. Tucker – to P.J. Tucker could hop on yeah, board. Yeah, look, with. Tucker's not a stats guy. Never has been and especially isn't at this point in his career. If you're bringing him in, you're bringing him in for defensive versatility and toughness come playoff time. That, yeah. that It's as simple as that. And I think that has a lot of value for veteran basketball teams or for young teams who need more veterans on their roster. Some of those teams we showed you fit, fit both of those categories. So who will trade for P.J. Tucker? Go ahead and let us know on this one where you guys think the veteran from Houston will end up.